Hello everybody, John here with Shooting Tips and Tricks and today I'm going to be putting together a slide for a Glock 19. Now for this project I picked up a aftermarket slide and barrel both of which come from this company uh, Swenson I believe is the name of it. Is this Focus? There it is. Yep. I'm not too familiar with this particular brand. I think they're relatively new and can't say for sure whether or not they're good ones, but we'll find out. And if they're not, I'll let you all know. Right, and I also got a complete slide parts kit for this build. Now they don't make a parts kit for a Glock 19, um, but for those of you that don't know, between the Glock 19 and the Glock 17, the only difference is the length up front. Everything from here back is the same between the two. So I picked up a kit for a 17, and it came with the full-size guide rod, which we won't be able to use for this build. So I had to pick up an aftermarket spring and guide rod for a Glock 19. Alright, now we can get started on this one. I'm going to start by putting together all these little parts here. And I guess we'll start with the firing pin here. We have the firing pin, and we have the little polymer retainer that goes in the back. Then we'll just slide the spring over it. But for these guys, since it likes to fall out the bottom, I always take and set them upright and then just slide the spring down. Now once you get it down you can take your two little halves of the retainer, which are these little guys, and you can just drop one on one side and grab the other one and drop it on the other side. Just get them lined up and there it is. We can set that guy aside for later. And then we'll take this is our firing pin safety, this little pin. And there's this little dinky spring here that goes into it. That's all there is to that guy. Then we have the spring and guide rod for the um, the extractor. Sorry, a little brain fart there. And all there is is the spring. And there's this little piece that goes in the back. And then the whole thing snaps onto the back of the rod. Let's get him on there. There we go. That guy's all done. Now for the installation in the slide. We're going to start with the biggest pain in the ass, which is this little guy here. Now that's the firing pin channel liner. I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't even know these are inside your gun, but they're in there. You can't even hardly see them. And I turned out, I turned down a piece of stainless steel into a little installation tool make this job a lot easier. And it's basically just going to slide over like so. And then we'll take the whole thing and just hammer it down into place. And they make these insulation tools that you can get from any major gun company. And, um, or not really a gun company, but anyone, any big company that deals with gun parts. And they're relatively cheap, I think around $11 or so. Yeah. And they make a world of difference because if you try installing it without one of these tools, you're most likely to smash it and have to pull it out and replace it. But you can get these liners pretty cheap too. I think they're only a couple bucks. Now will set our slide upright and we'll set it into place. Nope, oh, can't see. There we go. Now just set him down in there and take a little hammer and tap him down into place. And 
hopefully this doesn't flare out. Little by little, he's going in. There it is. Yep, he's all seated in there. Can't hardly see. A little bit of scuff around the outside there. And for the record, this is actually the second time that I've done this. I started doing a video before and I made a little blunder. When I turned down this tool, I didn't cut a little recess at the top here because my cutter doesn't have a straight angle to it it's kind of a rounded nose well what that ended up doing was creating a slight ramp and when I started hammering the channel liner in it hit that ramp and just banana peeled out on the top and then I had to yank it out and then run a lag bolt in there to yank the liner out oh Another little interesting tip, um, if you have to pull out your old channel liner, you can get a lag bolt and actually screw it into the channel liner and then yank the whole thing out. It makes it really easy. But that's why it's a little scuffed up around the rim there from when I was yanking it out. Alright, now that that's out of the way, we'll take our other parts. We'll take our firing pin safety here and get that little spring. Usually they stick in there so they don't they come out, but this guy doesn't want it. And we'll take our the firing pin safety and we'll set him into place. And then we'll just depress him down. And then drop our firing pin into the top. Lined up there. There we go. And the firing pin holds the safety in place. Then we'll take our extractor and he's just going to drop into right into the side there. Oh, they got in right. Yep, he's in right. And we'll take our rod for that guy. We'll drop him in. Oop. There we go. Had to get matched up there, right? Now we'll take our little back plate and let's see here. Punch here to make it a lot easier. I'll just take and push these two down. Oh. I'll slide our back plate in. Oh, we can just get them to stay down. Or get them down all the way. There's that guy. Just grip a little one here for this. Okay. Hey, come on. Now this could go a lot quicker, but you guys got the best view. Mine ain't so great. Well, this guy's going in there a little bit funky. All 
Alright, something ain't lining up there just right. Get back in a second. Alright, I'm back. That was a pretty simple little issue I had there. It was actually the back plate here. I had a little lip of polymer that was sticking up and making it hard to slide it in straight. I pulled it off and freaking straightened out that little piece and then it just snapped right in easily. Alright, well that's about it for the insulation. The only thing left are the open sights. And I would do them in this video, but somebody took off with the insulation tool. Yeah, I know you heard me. Should have known that stuff stays in the shop. But, I'll be back with another video and I'll have the a full installation of the sights. Another matter I'd like to address for those of you that are putting together your own Glocks. Um, if you're considering between aftermarket and a factory Glock, um, this setup here, or rather a a factory Glock slide, I've looked around all over, and I think the average price I've been able to find for them is between 360 and 400 dollars, and a lot of them are refurbs rather than brand new. And this whole setup here ran me about 450, and that's including these Trijicon night sights. So, something to consider if you're um, looking to put together your your own slide and you want to do a good slide on a budget. I'll just snap in the... Hey! What the heck did I do now? I swear it ain't until the camera turns on for shit to happen. Alright. Nope. Oh, let's pop our guide right in. There. Now the last thing left to do is the sights. Alright, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.